time to Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through verse number 6. In the last installment of the series of sermons entitled The Worthy Walk. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through verse number 6. I'm so sleepy, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Verse 6 reads, One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Thank you. You may have your seats. <coughs> And the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you have been called. To review, that word worthy means to walk heavy, uh, be a weighty Christian not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Be a strong, heavy Christian. Walk worthy, walk weighty, walk heavy of the vocation wherewith you are called. And then Paul talks about endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. He's making a plea for unity. But the problem with unity is our diversity. The good thing about the church is people. The bad thing about the church is people. Uh, church would be a wonderful place if it wasn't for the people. But we need the people in order to be the church. Paul makes a plea for unity. And the problem with that unity is the diversity among the members. But then he gives us in verse number two a path to unity. And the path to unity is with all lowliness and meekness and long suffering and forbearing one another in love. Finally, in this last message, Paul gives us the place of unity. My brothers and sisters, the ground of our unity does not rest in our ability to get along with one another. Our unity in the body of Christ rest upon the common elements we share as members of his body, the church. We have different appetites. We have different socioeconomic backgrounds. We were not all raised the same. We don't all like the same kinds of food. We don't all like the same kinds of dress. But there's several things that we have in common. And we find our unity in God, the Holy Spirit. It's right in verse number four. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One body. Uh, we are placed in the universal body of Christ when we are saved 
then we find our place in a local body where we can use the spiritual gifts that God has given us to his glory and to his honor. Uh, one body. The church is one body. Uh, we are denominational in preference, but one body. Uh, Baptists and Methodists, Episcopalians and Catholics, Wesleyans and Church of God in Christ, all of us are perhaps in different denominational persuasions, but we are one body in Christ. Baptists are not the enemy of the Methodists. Uh, the Methodists are not the enemy of the Episcopalians. All of us are members of one body. Uh, I, I read once that uh, a Baptist is a Catholic who has been washed. Uh, a Methodist is a Baptist who's been to college. And an Episcopalian is a Methodist who's got money. But all of us are members of one body. All of us are in the same Christian family. And then there is one spirit. Uh, the, the word says you ought to try the spirit uh, by the spirit. Because if it is the Holy Spirit of God... You can't act independently of what the Spirit is doing in every one of us in this church. Talk back to me if you can. Uh, the Holy Spirit will not have you to disturb the worship so that people can't hear the preaching of the Word of God because it is the job of the Holy Spirit to magnify Jesus Christ. And anything that detracts from Jesus Christ it's not the Holy Spirit. See how quiet you got right there? Well, well, no, you can't tell me how to shout and you can't tell me how to praise God. Well, if it, if it disturbs the preaching of the word so that the word does not go forth, it's not the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will not intercept Jesus Christ. He comes to magnify. He comes to shine the light on Jesus Christ. And if Jesus is being preached and you are detracting from the name Jesus, it's a spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. Uh, You've you got to try the spirit by the spirit. Because if it's the Holy Spirit, it'll make me happy too. Talk back to me if you can. If it's the Holy Spirit, it won't upset me. It won't disturb me. If it's the Spirit of the living God, it will magnify what's being said about Jesus Christ. He said, I will send you another comforter. That one another means the one of the same essence. I will send you another comforter. And when he comes, he will bear witness of the Son. Just like the Son came to magnify the Father, the Spirit comes to shine light on the Son. And anything that takes away from the magnification of the Son is not of the Holy Spirit. One body, one Spirit, one hope of your calling. Now the word hope, does not refer to a wish or a desire. The word hope in the Bible refers to a deep, settled conviction based on a clear word from God himself. What is this hope that all of us share at Lily Grove this morning? What is it that binds us in Christian love and the hope of our calling. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's our hope. Matthew 28 and 20 says, Lo, I am with you always, 
even until the end of the world. That's our hope. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. That's our hope. Philippians 4 and 19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. That's our hope. Romans 8 and 17 says, We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That's our hope. Paul says, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. That's our hope. Paul says, for we know that if this earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, we have a building of God a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. That's our hope. Jesus said in, in John chapter 14, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you will be also. That's our hope. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says, Now this I say, brethren, flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Come on, you can say it with me. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment I wish I had a Bible reader. In the twinkling of an eye. John says in the book of the Revelation, and God shall wipe all tears from their eyes. That's our hope. The psalmist says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That is our blessed hope. Uh, we find our unity in God the Holy Spirit and then in verse number 5 we find our unity in God the Son one Lord one faith one baptism <laughs> one Lord if Jesus Christ is not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Talk back to me if you can. He's not just content to be your savior. He wants to be your Lord. He wants to be your master, your ruler, your owner. He purchased you with his own blood. And anybody who loves me enough to die for me is worthy of my hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. Not, not, not he's going to be. He is Lord. Not he, he will be in the future. But he's Lord over his creation right now. Because in the beginning was the word. I need, I need one or two more Bible readers. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then we have one faith. One body of doctrine that the whole church lives by. Uh, the faith that is once delivered to the saints. 
Uh, the faith is nothing that we've come up with in the 21st century. I, I get perturbed uh, when, when people call the kind of preaching I do old school. Uh, I, I'm sure they mean it as a compliment, but I'm insulted by that, by that phrase, old school. Uh, the spinners are old school. The temptations are old school. Afros and Afro combs, picks and Afro rakes. You, you got to be over 50 to know what that is. That's, that's old school. Uh, a straightening comb. Yeah, you really got to be over 50 to help me here. That's, that's old school. Have I got a witness here? Uh, Bobby Sox is old school. Records on a record player is old school. But when you start talking about Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, baptized in the Jordan, died one Friday, got up early one Sunday morning, that's not old school, that's the faith was delivered to the saints. That same faith saved my grandmother. I wish I had some help to preach it. That same faith saved me. And if we keep on preaching it, that same faith will save somebody else. It makes bad men good. It makes good men better. It takes dope addicts and make deacons out of them. Prostitutes who sing in the choir. Drug dealers who become preachers. The faith that Jesus Christ delivered is still able to save. What can wash away my sin? I wish I had a witness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me, still make me whole again? It, it, it reaches hey, to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will Never! It still works. It still works. I said it still works. If I start talking about Jesus, somebody's going to get happy. If I start mentioning that name, it still has an effect on those who believe. When you, when you're a true Christian, you, you don't need a whole lot of priming. You, you, don't, you don't need nobody to, to give you a jump. Uh, you, 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 you alive when you got here this morning. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't need the deacons to get me in the mind of prayer. I woke up this morning. Have I got a witness? I, I don't need the choir to tell me give God some praise. When I think about the goodness of Jesus, how many doors he's already opened, how many ways he's already made. How many prayers he's already answered. My soul doesn't have to look back and wonder. I already know. It was nobody but Jesus. Uh, 
I haven't gotten the nerve to do it yet. I got a lot of nerve, but I haven't gotten the nerve to do it yet. Uh, one of these Sunday mornings, I'm just going to give the mic to somebody and just let you tell it. Like you know how to tell it. What the Lord has done for you. And, and the reason I haven't done it yet is because I may never get the mic back. Because when you start talking about how good God is, long way. He made a way out of nowhere. He picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. <laughs> one, one, one Lord. One faith, one baptism. As a hurry, the mode of baptism should not divide us. The mode of baptism should not divide us. The Methodists and the Catholics sprinkle. We Baptists immerse. That's mode of baptism. But neither mode is salvific. There's no salvation in sprinkling. There's no salvation in immersion. Because you can go under a wet devil and come out a dry one. Or you can sprinkle and that does not save. That's identification. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me see if I can make that make sense. When I see somebody wearing pink and green, I know automatically who they belong to. Uh, red and white with an upturned elephant. I know they don't fool with them people with pink and green because they belong to another persuasion. When I see that tattoo on your arm that signifies that you are a Q, I know you have nothing to do with alphas Come on, talk back to me here. Because you have chosen an identification. Now, that does not make you any more or any less who you are. You just choose those marks of identification. Getting in the water of baptism does not save you. You got to be saved before you get baptized. Because what baptism symbolizes is death to your old life and resurrection to new life in Jesus Christ. Am I making sense? And so immersion or sprinkling is of no consequence because if your heart is not right, God won't accept you anyway. That's God the Son. But as I hurry, our unity is now finally in God the Father. It's right here in verse number six. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Let me, let me unpack that and then I'm... I'm, 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 I'm going to go get something from my stomach, uh, food or otherwise, and, and I'm going to take a nap. Uh, 
Brother Johnson told me he got something in his trunk. Uh, and, and the Bible says it's for medicine. It's, it's good for your stomach, see. Uh, you need a deacon who drinks something for his stomach every once in a while. Uh, every pastor ought to have a drinking deacon. Uh, it, it's, it's good for your stomach. We, we find our unity in God the Father. One God, that's his position. One God. Hear, O Israel. That's the Jewish Shema. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one. We are not polytheistic. We are monotheistic. We believe in one God in three distinct manifestations. I wish I had somebody to help me. We are Trinitarian in our belief structure because we have one God in three personalities. God the Father God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God, free function. Um, it's like gas and ice and water. Three different forms of the same substance. I'm Terry Anderson, Houston and Lena Anderson's son. I'm Terry Anderson, Gwen and Winky and Bobby and Lee and Ray and Carl and Steve and Johnny's brother. I'm Terry Anderson, Victoria's father. I've not changed one time. I'm just Terry Anderson in three relationships. Somebody ought to help me here. God the Father is in God the Son, in God the Holy Spirit. We are chosen by God, redeemed by the Son, sealed by the Holy Spirit, but we have one God who is Father of all. That's his position. But then his person means that he's your father and he's my father. You can call him in Sugar Land. Somebody else can call him in Pearland. Yeah. Somebody else can call him in Clear Lake. Yeah. Somebody can call him in South Long. Somebody can call him in Fifth Ward and Third Ward, Texas. And he's the same father overall. He does not love me any more than he loves you. The same thing it takes for me to get saved is going to take for you to get saved. Because we have a common father. You're going to help me close this, won't you? But I want to move from his person and his position to his power. It's right here in verse 6. He's above all and through all and in you all. Watch that. Watch that progression. Above all, through all, and in you all. He's above it all. He is through it all. But he makes himself an abode, a dwelling place in you all. Somebody still missed that. He is above it all, through it all, but he makes himself small enough to get in you all. I still don't think I got that over to you. You know how we know the Holy Spirit is present? When all of us feel the same thing. I wish I had somebody to help me here. And brothers and sisters, you got to bring him with you when you come to church. Because you can't manufacture him. Because sitting by people in church will sometimes disturb the Holy Spirit. Because there are some people who quench the Spirit of God. 
There are some folk who are too mean to give God glory, to give God thanks and praise. And if you're sitting in a mean section of the church, if you're sitting in a dead spot at the church, you got my permission at any time during this preaching to get up and find you some people who know they've been born again. I was, um, I've said it here, and I had another demonstration of it the other day. Uh, Reverend Michael Portis, one of the preachers here, uh, called me the other day to tell me that he was going to be out of town. And he was driving along 288 around Blodgett and Southmore, and his call dropped. And he called me back and he said, Pastor, I'm sorry, I'm on 288. And my call dropped. I said, I told you. When you get on 288, right in that dip at Blodgett and Southmore, if you're talking on your cell phone, it drops because that's a dead spot. It's, it's one or two dead spots at church. Uh, some folk dressed up, but they're too cute to open their mouth. They, they dress too fine to give God some prayer. They, they don't want to sweat their silk. They don't want their hat to fall off. They, they don't want nobody laughing at them after church because they were carrying on so much. That, that's a few dead spots in here right now. You're going to help me close this, won't you? Some people come to church and wait till it gets full to go in the overflow in their dead spot. Talk back to me if you can. Uh, th there's a few dead spots in the balcony. There's one or two dead spots under the balcony. And there are about two or three dead spots right in here in this little section right, 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 right across here. And, and two or three are sleeping, I'm sure, behind me right now. But, but, but you ought to get with somebody who, who know they've been born again. Find somebody who's not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. Have I got a witness here? If God has done anything for you, don't let anybody smother your hallelujah. Don't let anybody stifle your praise. Don't let anybody tell you you're making too much noise. You need to sit down. I can't hear. I can't see. You getting on my nerve with all of that. It don't take all of that. You got my permission to turn around right now and tell them it don't take that for you. But you don't know my story. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know how many storms God has already brought me through. <laughs> You don't know how many burdens I've had to bear. You don't know how many tears I've had to cry. God's been good to me. And I'm not going to let you tell me how I ought to praise my father. He made a way out of no way. He saved me when I didn't even know his name. He healed me when the doctor said they did all they could do. You're not going to tell me how I praise the Lord when he's done so much. I just don't have time to talk about it. Is there anybody here? I said, is there anybody here who don't mind testifying? It was nobody but Jesus nobody but the Lord if the Lord opened doors for you why don't you shake somebody's hand if the Lord made a way for you why don't you help me magnify if the Lord pick you up turn you around place your feet 
on solid ground. Help me pray the name. Shake somebody's hand. Telling me, show sure been good. Show sure been good. Show sure been good. Yeah. Taste and see that the Lord is good. If he brought you, come on, help me shout a minute. If he kept you, why don't you wave your hand? Tell him if it had not been, if it had not been, yeah, for the Lord who was on my side. I wish I had a witness here. He died, didn't he die? But early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with all power in his hand. If you love him and you're not ashamed to testify, if he brought you and you don't care who's looking at you, if he made a way and you don't mind being a witness, why don't you grab somebody? Tell them you don't know, like I know, what the Lord, yeah, what the Lord, I know you Lord. Same, the same Lord is over all and through all and in you all. Thank God for the worthy walk. Walk worthy, walk heavy. Walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you have been called. He brought me out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And I'm a witness that can't nobody do me like Jesus. <laughs>